Hi, from the American College of Cardiology, this is Dharan Kumbani from UT Southwestern in Dallas, Texas. I'm the Clinical Trials Lead for ACC.org, and today we'll be covering the Thursday, October 26 trials from this year's TCT meeting in San Francisco. We've picked two landmark studies to talk to you about today. I'm so delighted to be joined by two clinical trial experts, Dr. Key Park from the University of Florida in Gainesville and Dr. Ajay Kirzane from Columbia University in New York, who is also one of the core program directors for this meeting. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Ajay, uh, we're going to start with the pooled analysis of the radiance trials. Uh, this is a you know study that you were the senior author for, and indeed, you're one of the uh, key um, thought leaders in this field. Tell us about the study. I think there's a lot of interest in renal denervation therapies. The FDA panels just convened um, in August, and they, we think there's going to be imminent approval of um, some of this technology um, in the very near future by the FDA. Um, renal denervation, from the, those of you who are familiar with it, um, is a way of reducing blood pressure with a device-based approach. And what we did in these three studies is we pooled the trial, the trial data from three individual randomized sham controlled trials to try to determine what happens with blood pressure and medication burden at a follow-up period of six months. You'll recall the primary endpoints of all three trials were at two months. And so clearly blood pressure reductions were shown with renal denervation compared to sham. But those sham controlled patients were untreated and uh, left untreated for three months, actually. And so what needed to happen at that point is to get medications on board to try to get their blood pressures better. If there was a residual effect of denervation out to six months, what one would expect to see is less medications being used in the sham arm compared to the denervation arm. And that's exactly what we showed. There was a less incremental addition of medications in the denervation group um, compared to the sham group. Sorry, I misspoke before. Less medications needed to be added for denervation relative to sham. And um, what we also observed were blood pressures dropping in both groups. Um, they were largely similar at six months, but when adjusted for that difference in medication burden, they were then lower at the denervation group compared to sham. So I think this is a signal of durability of this procedure out to six months. It's still early and we still need to have later durability shown in multiple studies, but based upon these analyses and others like it, we do think that renal denervation will be approved in the United States in the near future. Ajit, uh, thank you for that great summary, and you know, congratulations to you and uh, the other investigators for doing these studies. Um, and I also want to applaud you for not sort of overstating um, the results. I think you know you've been appropriately, um, you know, cautious about interpreting that. Um, you know, clearly showing uh, at two months that you know there was evidence of efficacy, and then at six months now, you know, showing durability of these findings, and uh, certainly look forward to longer term follow up of this really very promising technology. At a minimum, it appears that, you know, um, it will be a good adjunct for patients who have hypertension. It may not replace medical therapy, as you point out, but it may be a good adjunct for that, um, for these patients going forward. So again, um, thank you for that uh, wonderful um, insight into this, uh, this pooled analysis. Uh, next up, we have uh, the quality of life analysis from the trilubinate trial. Uh, as you may remember, this was a pivotal trial comparing tricuspid transcatheter to edge-to-edge repair to routine medical therapy among patients with symptomatic um, tricuspid regurge. The tricuspid edge-to-edge repair was performed um, using the triclip, um, Abbott's triclip, and we saw the primary results that were presented at ACC this year, uh, which suggested um, a benefit uh, in favor of um, the tricuspid edge-to-edge repair. He, uh, you uh, are an experienced structural interventionist. Tell us, tell us your thoughts about this trial and this study in particular. Yeah, so the investigators really sought to sort of dig into the details of the quality of life that was assessed in the tribal main study. So I think as structural operators, um, the tricuspid territory is still, um, you know, an emerging landscape. We all know a lot about the aortic valve, a lot about the mitral valve. But we don't know nearly as much about, um, you know, how the outcomes are going to be affected by the tricuspid interventions that are emerging in this field. Um, and some of the debate um, centered around the original um, presentation of Triluminate was centered around the fact that um, there was no difference in terms of um, hard co- outcomes such as um, hospitalization or heart failure readmissions. Um, but there wasn't a benefit in terms of quality of life. And so um, TCT this year 
um, the investigators looked at more details of the quality of life metrics, specifically digging really into the um, KCCQ metrics, which we all have um, historical you know, use and have learned to appreciate. Um, but they found that the increases in the um, questionnaire points um, occurred within the first month. They were durable over the first year. They also found that the patients who had the lowest initial scores actually had the most room for benefit. Um, and so, which I think is really important and something that maybe is a little paradoxical um, when we think about it. Um, they also um, stratified um, these measures in terms of the change or the delta in terms of how many points were actually achieved, comparing that between medical therapy and transcatheter um, uh, you know, med, uh, intervention. And they found that there was a consistent um, significant difference looking at however you shook out the metrics in, in terms of that delta. Um, either it's 10 or 20 points or even greater than 60 points. Um, interestingly, they also found that there was association between um, KCCQ and also the change in TR, um, so that there was a change in the um, questionnaire per one grade improvement in TR severity. And also, interestingly, per template increase in that score, they found a 30% reduction in death and heart failure hospitalization, which is a little bit of a counterpoint to, I think, the original um, presentation of the trial results. Um, so I think overall, um, one of the key points from this analysis and sort of bolsters what was presented in the original um, presentation several months ago um, was that there is significant functional benefit, again, um, specifically in those with the lowest functional status to begin with. Um, I think that we have a many, many years of follow-up in these patients to really declare what their heart outcomes may eventually be, um, but that there is definite um, quality of life benefit, however you sort of cut it. Um, in helping these patients um, improve their quality of life. Well, thank you. That's a really nice summary. This was a you know very complex trial. Um, you know, there's a lot to unpack, um, and I think uh, you know because a lot of the focus of this study really is on the quality of life aspects. I think this paper is really important, and you know who better than Suzanne Ardell and Dave Cohen and colleagues to really drill down into that. Um, and I know this kind of builds on earlier work that John Spurtis and colleagues had done, suggesting sort of, you know, a five-point increase in KCCQ being considered a small uh, improvement, 10 points as moderate, and then 20 points as large. And as you pointed out, um, you know, they, they certainly have tried to, you know, work with those thresholds to try to see, you know, which patients might benefit most from this therapy. So, yeah, great summary, great insights, um, and uh, certainly look forward to longer-term follow-up of this trial, um, as you pointed out as well. So, um it's been a great meeting, a lot of practice changing science, um, really, really uh, helpful, clinically clinically relevant uh, studies. And I want to thank both of you for sharing your insights on today's important trials at TCT in San Francisco. This is Dharam Kumbani for the ACC.org signing off. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye.